At the Independent Institute, we are privileged to have many top scholars involved in our program. And in 25 years, we're quite proud of the fact that we've never ever had a single study refuted. And I'm very proud and pleased to introduce the man who oversees this work, Alexander Tabarrok is our research director as well as associate professor of economics at George Mason University and co-author of, of one of the world's most influential blogs, Marginal Revolution. His books include Entrepreneurial Economics, The Voluntary City, Changing the Guard, Judge and Jury, and with Tyler Cowen, the great Principles of Economics textbook, Modern Principles. Alex also gave a wonderful TED talk uh, in 2009 that many of you may have seen. So I'm delighted to introduce Alex Tabrock. Thank you, David. Well, my first job is just going to be very simple, which is to uh, introduce a, a video on the uh, 25 years of the Independent Institute history. And David has said, uh, please don't laugh uh, too hard when you see some of the older pictures of David. So please roll the tape. 25 years ago, with no money and little more than a big idea, an entrepreneur's dream began in a basement in Northern California. But unlike some others in the area at that time, this entrepreneur's big idea didn't revolve around tiny microchips. It revolved around some of the oldest principles in history, freedom, individual liberty, and the highest standards of independent academic inquiry. The Institute is an organization that was essentially bootstrapped based on a particular approach we wanted to take. The approach was to do serious work on serious issues, but to step back and get a better handle on what the effects of, of government policies might be and how best to solve these issues. Well, one of the things that uh, David set out to do with the Institute was to keep it outside of Washington, for starters. Uh, so and not to be affected by just ex what's going on every five minutes in Washington. To think about really serious issues, to think about them in a deep way, in a long run way, and to do academic quality work. We call it the first garage think tank because it was literally not in his garage but in his basement and just working 20 hours a day. From the outset, the fledgling Independent Institute faced an obstacle that in retrospect seems quaintly naive. The thought that with the Reagan Revolution in full swing and the Soviet Empire crumbling, the intellectual battle against socialism, oppression, and ever-expanding government had been won. In hindsight, we now know that that was, a, that was a fallacy. We know that the very cultural roots of the view that government is a solution to every problem were still there. David and the Institute forged ahead confident that despite the Reagan Revolution and crumbling of the Soviet Empire, the battle for liberty was nowhere close to being over. In 1987, the Institute's future research director, Robert Higgs, wrote what would become a landmark and prescient book, Crisis and Leviathan, which showed how governments use national emergencies, both real and imagined, to expand their own powers and limit individual freedom. Professor Higgs has shown that government grows not in terms of these usual views of social benevolence, but it grows in terms of crises that are announced and claimed. They create enormous fear, they create enormous anxiety, and they create the ability of political powers to assume new powers they didn't have before. By 1989, the Institute was growing, and it moved from San Francisco to a new and larger space in Oakland, with administrative, research, conference, and warehouse facilities. In a 1990 feature article, Success Magazine termed the Independent Institute the Empire of Ideas, acclaiming its uniquely entrepreneurial approach to policy research and education in producing an effective audience of over 70 million, as compared to the 5,000 to 10,000 audience of traditional Washington policy organizations with annual budgets averaging up to $30 million. Throughout the 1990s, the Institute remained at the vanguard of groundbreaking peer-reviewed research. In 1994, the Institute was critically influential in defeating the Clinton Health Plan as a result of its open letter to President Clinton, 
critiquing his proposed use of health price controls and signed by 565 economists and 76 other scholars. In 1996, the Institute began publishing the Independent Review, a quarterly scholarly journal that has been edited since its inception by Robert Higgs. Even though I'm an economist by training and an economic historian in most of my writing, uh, I, I have uh, interests in, in law and philosophy and, and the other social sciences and and in uh, things that uh, touch on these areas. So a lot of ground is covered in the independent review. We just had a, a plane crash into Alpha 4 of the World Trade Center, transmit a second alarm, and start relocating companies into the area. A compelling difference in the Independent Institute's program is our awareness that crises are used to grow government. And this awareness led us in the aftermath of 9-11 to warn that the terrorist attacks may well be used to grow government in ways having little or nothing to do with security. In addition, and based on our studies, we advise the use of the constitutional provision of letters of mark and reprisal be used to target, apprehend, and bring to justice those individuals responsible for the attacks. Unfortunately, neither message was heeded as a new area of federal spending and power was launched, with spending increasing by 50% until 2008, trillions of dollars of new debt added since, and no end in sight. Our warnings have come true, and most Americans have today come to be receptive to the kind of analysis the Institute is known for in calling for a return to first principles in the ordering of society, just as the founders had intended. This is a theme that I think is particularly important today because uh, there's a, a, a debate uh, going on in many countries about what the best way to uh, encourage uh, entrepreneurship in developing countries is. Um, and there are uh, wide-ranging views about this. Uh, many of them, um, I suggest, uh, are uh, misguided and I think uh, it was a good time uh, to respond uh, to some of these uh, uh, wrong ideas. Welcome to MyGovCost.org. Every day we hear news about federal spending programs passed in Congress, annual budget deficits, and the ballooning national debt. But few of us can relate to the billion and trillion dollar figures thrown around in Washington. Have you ever wondered how much the war in Iraq, the recent bailouts, or Social Security are costing you personally? Here at MyGovCost.org, we'll show you the price tag of these programs. And more importantly, you can see what the value of those dollars would be worth if you could otherwise invest them in the stock market. So I'd like to tell you one more story about the Independent Institute. It was 2002. A respected Latin American journalist called David. What he said was that a colleague, a fellow journalist, was in trouble. After speaking out against the ruling powers, this journalist was under political, legal, and physical threat. 
He and his family had been forced to go underground. They needed to get out of their country. But this journalist did not want to end the fight. Instead, he was committed to speaking out against corruption and abuse. What he was looking for was a new home, a new platform, and new allies with which to make the case for liberty. Well, that journalist was Alvaro Vargas Llosa. And that conversation began Alvaro's association with the Independent Institute. So far, however, I've only told you half the story because there is another hero whom we need to recognize. When David was told about Alvaro's situation, he immediately called our longtime Independent Institute board member, Peter Howley. Now, Peter is a serial entrepreneur. He began in 1973 launching telephone services in New York and LA with a little startup called MCI. He became CEO of Centex and made it into one of the fastest growing, most profitable, best managed US corporations. He co-founded IP Wireless in 1999, long before other people had begun to realize the power of these new technologies. He played a leading role in Exodus Communications He's founded five firms and been a mentor and advisor to many others, and he has served his country in many capacities. Now, when David called Peter and he explained Alvaro's perilous situation, Peter's response was immediate. We cannot let this voice be silenced. And it was because of his extraordinary and generous donation from Peter that Alvaro was able to come to the United States and to the Independent Institute. I don't, I don't think of Peter, however, as simply a philanthropist, as someone who just gives his money away. I think of Peter as an investor, indeed as a venture capitalist, a venture capitalist not simply of products but of ideas. And in this case, as with, as with so many of uh, Peter's investments, I think the investment in the Independent Institute has paid off. In the nearly 10 years that Alvaro has been with the Institute, he's made huge contributions, not the least of which was his book, uh, Liberty for Latin America. This is a sweeping 500-year history of the politics and economics of Latin America that in 2005, the Washington Post called one of the best books of the year. I guess we shouldn't be too surprised that Alvaro's a pretty good writer. <laughs> well, in turn, that book, Liberty for Latin America, led to a National Geographic television series on contemporary Latin American history and politics. This was seen in Spanish and in English throughout Latin America, including in Peru, where it must have infuriated some of Alvaro's enemies. I say seen throughout Latin America, not quite true, not quite true. The first episode was shown by an independent, independent television station in uh, Venezuela, before the remaining episodes were yanked off the air by the Chavez government. So there is still much work to be done. So when Peter sees a great opportunity, he is willing to take a risk, to invest in the ground floor of a compelling project to spread great ideas around the world. Uh, indeed, the, the motto of uh, Peter's firm, the Howley Management Group, is turning great ideas into great businesses. But what Peter does as a philanthropist is to take his genius at producing great businesses and to turn that into great ideas. So please welcome entrepreneur, philanthropist, and one of the great venture capitalists of ideas, Peter Howley. There's no way I can live up to all of that explanation and introduction, but thank you very much. I'm going to be very brief, and I'm going to share a little bit of my history, but you've already heard a little a bit of it. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I have been going back many years uh, with the beginning of MCI. So I ran, when I discovered the Independent Institute, I recognized right away a kindred spirit. And then I was invited to join the board, and I suddenly discovered that they operate like an entrepreneurial operation. Dedicated employees, cost consciousness, very focused on their goals, and their output for this small group is unbelievable. 
And then I got a call, as you just heard from David Thoreau. Quick story about Alvado, Peru, coming around underneath the Underground Railroad type of thing. Would I help? I said, yes. And to think that, in a, as I recall, months, but it was probably a year, he comes out with the book Liberty for Latin America that became a world bestseller, particularly in Latin America. And Latin America includes Europe, uh, Italy, Spain, Portugal, as well as, as no, Latin America doesn't, but Latin background. And then, and then he's produced many works, as you just heard, including another book called Lessons from the Poor. So my investment in the Independent Institute was phenomenal and so satisfying to me personally. So I'm going to stop and ask you to give some thought to joining me in helping the Independent Institute and investing in their ideas in helping us to do the mission that you've heard a lot about tonight and continue to that critical and never more so critical than today role that the Independent Institute takes and has. So if you look at your seat in front of you, there will be a card like this. I would really appreciate it, and we would, and the Independent Institute would, if you would look at that and give some serious thought to how you might best invest in the future, invest in their ideas, and back and support the Independent Institute. Thank you. Peter's referring to our uh, program called Fund for the Future, and uh, we would be honored to have um, all of you or any of you involved, and I think you'd be quite pleased with what will come out of it. 